go over to another centers is bhagwan parshuram college first i will like to congratulate you to bring out a platform for almost 10000 teachers all together for effective learning but sir i have a request that kindly put up uh, the session according to learning because uh, something has been messed up during the course of this one week Uh, learning procedure should also be there with the active learning of the teacher because teacher fraternity that are being there are not coming all together from iits so there is lot of uh, discrepancy in terms of learning uh, among the teachers as well so it's a good point that you make i uh, do you have any suggestion on how should we go about it uh, over to you again yes sir sir last time we had a workshop on databases now similar type of workshop could be arranged for programming where the session could be multitude with the active learning because most of the teacher are uh, coming through the platform where they had the traditional learning so to imbibe the uh, active learning may not be possible all together uh, sir uh, thank you so much i think uh, we'll try to see how we can combine Uh, i will be requesting professor sridhar ayer and professor sahana murthy in fact to help us fashion our future workshop such that we include active learning in the workshops for teachers themselves good suggestion thank you so much annamacharya institute of technology i am lakshmi narayana from annamacharya institute of technology and sciences rajampet and you are conducted a very good program and sponsored through sponsored by mhrd sir this program is very useful for engineering college students engineering college faculty and students and i am asking the question sir having disadvantage with go to why still go to is used in c programming that is my first question sir and second question why pointers are eliminated in java programming uh, interesting questions both the first question is it is wrong to say go to is used in c programming it is the correct statement to make is go to is available in c programming language but the availability of a feature need not mean that it is used as a matter of fact uh, for many years now i have not come across a single c or c++ program which has a go to statement used so while the statement exists number 1 we should try and avoid discussion of that statement at all because as you have seen now construction of most algorithms does not require us to use that go to go to in fact is useful only to illustrate how an iteration work how the control moves around and so on uh, however if you will notice there is a series of statement such as continue statement break statement these are effectively go tos uh, you may not know it but many many years ago when there was a huge debate on structured programming versus efficient programming uh, professor diestra wrote his famous paper called go to statement considered harmful and to that uh, professor donald kanut of stanford responded saying that a if you want to write efficient code then without using go to statement it is impossible to guarantee better efficiency of course in those days we are talking about reducing the number of executions of instructions in a program which was so critical because computers were so slow that does not hold good now but sir don knut also pointed out an important thing he said that while people say don't use go to statement they use things like continue break etc etc it appears to me that people want to go to places without saying go to that was a very interesting observation coming back to your question and the current status i think it is uh, not correct to tell our students that go to statement is used in c programming language 
it should generally be avoided. If at all it is to be mentioned, you should say that it exists, but its usage is not recommended. That is at least the uh, current way of looking at programming. Thank you so much. Tejpur University, Tejpur. Ah, sir, on behalf of the all participants, we congratulate you and just we uh, propose our sincere thanks to coordinate uh, this program and that program was very helpful for us. And even we have learned so many things related to active learning teaching uh, methods. And uh, really it was very useful for us. Our colleague Dr. Roji Das is having one question for you, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Hello, sir. I'm Dr. Rosie Sharma. And uh, the question that I had is, uh, it is related to turtle. Huh? Because whenever we want to draw something in simple CPP, what happens is, is that turtle comes up. Is there a way that we can hide the turtle or change also change the shape and size of the turtle? That's a very interesting observation. Uh, I think uh, Professor Ranade and his team designed that turtle because they wanted to, it to look like a turtle. But suppose we want to make it only a dot or some uh, red uh, circle, small circle or something. Is that what you had in mind? Exactly, sir. And also, can we hide it also sometimes? Okay. So, modify turtle shape and <coughs> hide turtle shape. I will tell you, you can actually make an interesting project to do this itself. Because the simple CPP package has been open sourced by Professor Ranade. We shall actually be putting it up on the GitHub and we'll be announcing it in this forum also, so that the entire source code will be available to you. And you and your students who don't like the present turtle shape can make it into a circle, make it into a ellipse, make it whatever, make it look like a joker, or make it disappear. It's all your choice. But you will have to modify the code and recompile simple CPP. What I'll try and do is, I think the point you make is excellent. Because sometimes when our students are executing simple CPP program uh, and they are looking at the graphics as the pictures are drawn, their eyes and mind may wrongly get focused on that red rectangle rather than the shape that is being drawn. So you are very right. Thank you for this observation. I will see if we can give at least alternate choices of shapes in the simple CPP package. So that it could be parameterized, you could choose a parameter and then it will show that shape. Making turtle disappear is interesting. Uh, I don't think Professor Ranade is going to like his favorite turtle disappearing completely from the package. But we'll see uh, how exactly we do that. Thank you so much for your inputs. Loyola ICAM College of Engineering. Sir, we are very happy with this workshop, sir. And I thank Dynamicity and MHRD for providing this uh, workshop. And I thank you and Professor Anade, Professor Kannan Magutale, Professor Mukta Atre, Professor Jayatonde, and technical team like uh, Sajan Jikchik and Sushan. And uh, the outcome of uh, workshop is very excellent. And many participants have uh, did uh, many animations in simple CPP, like insertion sort and swapping up two numbers like that. Many applications are developed by, uh, developed by our participants. And uh, what my suggestion is, we need to have uh, more team assignments. Like uh, I have attended the coordinator workshop. In that coordinator workshop, uh, the team assignments has been presented throughout the uh, projector. Uh, likewise, uh, I need to, I need my participants to in future workshop. So we we will ask the participant to present their uh, projects. Uh, I I am actually very pleasantly surprised and very happy to note that your participants have gone out of the way uh, to do more things than what was expected officially. Uh, it is very good that your people have tried to build small animations and so on. Uh, uh, what I would like to uh, do is to take this opportunity to suggest uh, all participants across the country, please note the following. The Submissions, etc., requirements which are being defined here are primarily being defined 
to fulfill two thing two requirements one is that formally completing defined tasks such that we can officially issue people the certificate is one requirement the second requirement is as part of the workshop people should indeed do some activities like this together that was the second achievement however what uh, input has come from loyola is that like in loyola there will be at many other places uh, participants who would have tried something fancy on their own who would have come up with something and they would like to formally continue doing that so let me think of how to do it i will probably announce a separate forum on the moodle for all such participants or all the groups which want to go beyond their brief and do something more i would request all participants at loyola if they have built some small interesting animations they will be excellent sample programs for all of us teachers so if you feel like you can work for a few days more collaboratively spanning across teams if required and put that up as an additional submission i will create a link by today evening which is called bonus submission link the bonus submission link is for participants of the type that he mentioned they either individually or in teams can submit any interesting thing that they have done either an example or a problem or a program that they have solved and that they should submit on this so called bonus link i will consolidate all such submissions over the next one month and put them for the benefit of all of you it's an excellent suggestion thank you so much kurukshetra university sir myself chandra divakar on the behalf of rcid 1300 uh, i want to thank you and your team for organizing such innovative and qualitative uh, workshop on uh, programming each participant have enjoy art of team work activity like eps and peer instruction will be helpful for all participants from effective for effective uh, teaching learning process sir uh, through uh, uh, avu i uh, also want to uh, thank to uh, two more uh, workshop coordinator Uh, Dr. Sovik Viswas from Kolkata and uh, Dr. Vinod Kumar Upalapu from Kakinada. But thank you for the compliments. I am happy that uh, your colleagues and participants there uh, enjoyed this uh, workshop. Uh, let's go over to Apex Institute of Technology. Yeah, I am Siddharth Nilamani. Uh, there is a little confusion about the uh, course topic. instead of it being computer programming had it been programming pedagogy or computer programming teaching methods something like that then a lot of confusion would have been removed because most of the participants were expecting something about uh, programming teaching methods uh, the, like that kind of thing and one of my colleague is also having a question ajay hello sir good morning i am ajay anand and uh, uh, i was just looking at what we have all studied in this workshop like we started with mooc we wrote transcripts we learned how to dub video lectures we reviewed presentations test questions active learning and peer to peer interaction uh, sorry peer interaction setting we set questions on various complexity including a project proposal we studied simple cpp to introduce students to programming pointers file input output etc overall the workshop was good and i was particularly particularly impressed by simple cpp and how it can really ignite interest in the students still i don't see an eminent objective in this i am not able to connect these individual dots can you help me with that the i'm i'm happy you point this out uh this course this workshop was constructed by us to convey to all of you a large number of different experiments that we are doing and many of us are trying to do them together the connecting of the dots as you rightly point out is a work in progress 
it is not something that we have perfected already but we were so enthused by the results that we got after doing each of these things individually some faculty member trying a fifth classroom some faculty member trying simple cpp some faculty member like me trying take home test that we felt that as we go ahead and experiment with these things collectively in our own courses starting from the next semester it may be useful for a large number of participants please also appreciate that teaching itself is a creative art and we would like every teacher to follow one's own method of teaching so while you are very right that there is something missing in terms of connecting these dots but my answer again i will reiterate connecting these dots is an unfinished work it is a work in progress the objective here was to expose all the colleague teachers across the country with various useful experiments that have been done with various useful techniques that have been tried and then let it be with the teachers individually to decide what they think can be best used in their own teaching so that is the limited objective that we had today but i believe that in about 6 months to a year from now when different teachers like you have tried something and given us their feedback plus the large scale moocs initiative that the government of india is taking within one year we should be able to see a a connected picture of all these things so that is my answer to it i hope that is satisfactory but i appreciate your observation that there are lot of dots uh, but it was it was by design it was not by default it was by design that we wanted to discuss a variety of things which we felt were useful in teaching programming thank you uh, shri sant gajanan maharaj college this is dotre from uh, shri sant gajanan maharaj college of engineering shegaon sir we are really happy that you have conducted this workshop for all our teachers and uh, really we enjoyed this pedagogical techniques and definitely i assure you that on behalf of our colleagues that we are going to use this techniques in the classrooms especially sir think we are sure technique is very nice and definitely it will be very useful to uh, for the students as well as to convey the concept to the students thank you thank you sir thank you very much sri ramkrishna institute of technology uh, i am professor kt varadarajan hod it department of sri ramakrishna institute of technology coimbatore my question is that regarding the compiler where is it where it is being stored whether it is in the hard disk or in the ram and uh, second question is you have given a fantastic the morning you have given the fantastic lecture by buddharam tumbo method that indicates what is happening inside the processor that is adding process what is happening like that for each and every program we are able to give an animation that is c program and c plus program how it is acting inside the processor it will be giving a very good knowledge to the students the first year student so in future if it is possible you can adopt this method for teaching process so i also appreciate your activity you are tireless you have worked for 3 hours to 4 hours daily and you are able to communicate almost all the things which are relevant to the c and c plus program on behalf of the srit staff members and behalf of the management and principal i thank you very much professor and this is this are the questions my questions please answer to my questions thank you uh, thank you professor varad rajan as far as your first question is concerned a compiler like any other program ordinarily resides on the desk but whenever compilation process has to happen the compiler is loaded inside the memory 
the compiler then reads your program, compiles it, and leaves the memory for your program to run. So the compilers, where it is, residence is not important. Ordinarily, like any other file, it is an executable file which resides on the disk. But during compilation process, it resides in the memory. So that is the answer to the first question. I really uh, uh, I am pleased to see that you like the Dumbo uh, animation for introducing uh, the basic nature of the computer. I have found that very useful. In my earlier offering decades ago, I used to draw this Dumbo as a hand-drawn caricature on a piece of paper and, and show it. But today the technology is available by which I can create an animation. I do agree with you that such animations are useful. But when it comes to discussing the behavior of uh, slightly larger C++ or C programs, or for that matter programs in any language, this kind of animation through a caricature may or may not be very useful. Instead, what we are trying to build is animation showing what happens to the data. For example, when an array is sorted, you write a sorting program. When you go through steps of that sorting program, what is happening to different array elements, it is nice if people can visualize it. Many people have written such animations. And uh, what I will do is combine your suggestion of using a Dumbo-like caricature and the need for people to understand how, for example, elements move in an array during the sorting algorithm and try to put a composite animation where Dumbo is standing in the background, he is moving elements of the array from here to there, and the elements are taking shape, becoming sorted. And on the right hand side, you show the C++ program where a pointer shows which instruction is being executed and what is happening to it. To some extent, this kind of thing can be actually shown in an in a environment of uh, in an integrated development environment. For example, in simple CPP itself, if you or your colleagues explore it further, there is a debug option and there is a step option. In the debug option, you can set certain variable values to be shown at every step. And then if you ask the student to step through that algorithm, it will execute one by one, exactly like Dumbo does. And in that window, you can see the changing value of the variable. But I agree with you that a, a full-fledged animation is a far more powerful tool for people to understand easily. I'll keep that in mind and try to construct some composite animation. Thank you. We go over to Maulana Azad uh, National Institute. Good afternoon, sir. Good this afternoon. This is Atul Gupta. Yeah. Uh, sir, as you have mentioned many a times that C language uh, has not been designed to teach as an introductory programming language. And uh, what I know about that many IITs and other universities are offering this Java as an introductory programming language. So I would like to know about your opinion that which language should be used to taught uh, uh, for the freshers uh, in the first year? Well, uh, first I will give you my personal opinion and then I will give you what is I call the common wisdom. My personal opinion is if C language is somewhat inadequate in introducing computer programming to students, then use of Java is actually more horrible. And I'll tell you the reason why I feel so. Java is a beautiful language, by the way, and very large practical code is written in Java. And most probably it is very essential for all of our students to learn Java eventually. But here we are talking about the first course in programming. The first course in programming, and it, this is not only my opinion, but the opinion of a very large number of expert teachers. I'm not talking of programming experts, but expert teachers. That the first course on programming should emphasize learning of procedural programming. Java is an object-oriented programming language. You cannot even start talking about Java without talking about objects, without talking about classes, and without talking about methods. If you start with that kind of lingo, it often would confuse students. 
in fact invariably wherever good computer science computer programming teaching happens the first course is always a course which emphasizes procedural programming now the fact that c has a very cockite syntax is the only problem but in so far as teaching basic concepts is concerned you can use that i do not know in fact i do not understand how some universities even in india have java programming as the first course i really wonder how students make mental model of basic algorithms in their minds when they learn using that so that is my answer this is not withstanding anything about java as i said java is a beautiful language by the way i am re- i just remember one thing uh, there was a question which was asked by some other colleagues and which i did not answer this was about why there are no pointers in java uh, i will take this opportunity to answer that question for all of us uh, explicit usage of pointers is always considered a very dangerous thing and that is because of the reasons that many of our colleagues have mentioned time and again there are dangling pointers uh, there are pointers which are null pointers and all kinds of problems ensue and that is because not there is something wrong with pointers but it is not easy to handle pointers professionally and meticulously you have to be very careful while handling pointers java programming language was designed right from the inception to ensure that such difficulties are not faced by the programmer that is why the pointer does not exist in java is not an accident it is a design the designers of java programming language felt that it is an arduous responsibility on the heads of programmers to keep worry about the pointers what they rightly said is people want to deal with objects so let them deal with objects directly why do they need something to point to something to point to something they should be able to do it without the inconvenience of pointers so that is the reason uh, i i see professor gupta that you have something additional to comment on please go ahead i came to know that iit bombay is taken lot of initiative to develop open source software for example scilab uh, which can uh, really substitute the matlab which is very costly software and uh, i think this is the right pr- platform where you are interacting with so many people across the country to to tell about uh, something about those those initiatives and to encourage them to use this kind of software so this is just my comment and i really hope that this, this such a effort should be highly acknowledgeable and uh, and should uh, and we should say a lot of money Uh, giving uh, purchasing uh, these uh, these uh, very costly softwares uh, thank you so much professor gupta this is uh, ips academy at indore very good afternoon sir i have two questions you talked about conditional execution and sequential execution the question is how they are related to if and go to statement which we use in fortran are they similar analogous to those two statements are different thank you sir yes they are exactly analogous in fact uh, the conditional execution uh, paradigm of uh, c and the syntax of c is different in fortran you would implement the conditional execution using f and of course unfortunately you have to use go to by the way i think you are talking about the old versions of fortran which uh, both of us used in our early days if you look at the fortran as it exists now fortran provides uh, complete facilities for a fully structured programming and in fact it is not essential for you at all to use any go to statement so i will i will conclude my interaction with that